the uh, mysterious missing brakes have arrived. Um, don't know what happened there. Maybe some idiot ordered the wrong ones. Um, but they have arrived and it is time to get back into it. Been a bit of a break since the video, so just keen to jump straight into some wagon content and we can get into later why it's been a bit of a break. If you joined us because of the big Brembo break somewhere on the thing that I'm probably going to put there as a clickbait, sorry, kind of got you, but it is still a fun build of a tiny 318, so no big Brembo, Brembo, ba, ba, ba. also I can't talk, I do this a lot. Um, no big Brembo break install, six pot caliper stuff, we just got some standard replacements, which are groove discs and some pads from Brembo for the little 318 gem that we're restoring so if you want to stick around for that please do today we also have some brand new oe plus coils to try and uh trying to smash out just narrow down what that possible miss could be could be more but we'll get into that later before we do the brakes i want to chuck these on see what it sounds like see if it runs better because that would be a great solve and look how pretty they are money 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 crap 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 cobwebs can't show that on youtube oh no Apparently these Delphi coils are the OE ones that you get when you buy BMW parts anyway. According to FCP you're in a few more places, so hopefully that's right. So we won't get any misses from using aftermarket that don't quite do the right job. But let's check these in. Commence time lapse now. Sweet, those are in. They're actually quite easy. The easiest part we're going to do today. The other thing I got was a new Exxon bulb. The box has had some damage. <coughs> I've actually had to like put it back together a little bit. So hopefully this guy isn't too buggered from shipping. I don't want to touch the bulb with my hand. I've opened it the wrong end. Worst unboxing video on YouTube right here. Literally could not be more hard. Um, there it is. So it looks on visual inspection okay. I straight up can't even remember which um which which bulb it is. Twenty five hundred volts. Not scary at all. Oh what? Was this not even for real? The groove for the pin to sit in. It's not even sitting in there. So I'm not even I haven't even taken that off yet. So I'm not sure if we actually needed one or if legit the bulb that is there just wasn't fitted properly. Oh, I think it was fitted correctly, and then I think we had a lovely high voltage explosion, because look at that, it's just like exploded, half the bulb's still in there, this end's just blowing up, damn, so here it is, just unscrewed that dude that holds it in, and look at the back of that. It's seen better days. <laughs> so, I cleaned it up the best I could. Probably wouldn't recommend doing this, but the connectors look fine. The insulating stuff still looks like it's where it's meant to be. Had the new one in there just so that I didn't put lots of crap back into the light casing. But, on today's episode of Fuck Around and Find Out, we're going to see what happens when I plug it back in and turn it on. So, as expected, when you see something like this, that uh, headlight unit is buggered, it didn't even do anything, not even a flicker on that light. I was just trying to get it back together so I could hopefully maybe pass the warrant that this thing needs and I need both lights working for that. But I guess I will be ordering more headlight parts. I imagine when an Exxon bulb with 2500 volts, 25,000 volts, goes kaboof like this, it probably fries more than just where the connection had the issue. So, we will look into that. If you know anything about Exxon bulbs, we've repaired, or you've seen one like this before. I've got no experience with Exxon bulbs. Typically avoid them in cars, but if you do, drop something in the comment, please. That would be very nice. I don't feel like spending heaps of time researching something that just allows me to drive a car, like a basic function, like headlights. If you ever see one of these videos of me working on the car on gravel and think, that doesn't look so bad, I should do it. Don't. It's horrible. It's so much more horrible than it looks. Especially when we're using jack stands on uneven surfaces, it is pretty horrible. If we leave the jack under anyway, but... It's sturdy, but it just takes such a lot of twisting and setting it up and getting it perfectly right to get it nice and level and safe. And especially because like on normal gravel it's probably fine, but this is like big chunks of coarse gravel, so it's a real pain in the ass. Anyway, 
I forgot to loosen the wheel nuts after doing all that. So, cue brake montage of me painfully <laughs> removing wheels followed by the brakes being done. We have a solution. I just um, was trying to get a G-clamp out to compress the brakes from the container and I just got stung by a wasp right on that finger, right at the top, just there, right on the joint, just there, which is perfect when I'm doing fiddly things in the hand. There's actually one right by the damn handle. I'm gonna try running there and hope they don't chase me. I'm too fast for you assholes! <laughs> I'm on these because if they've been filled to their max while well, they've got old brakes in, when you squish them you're gonna get a lovely mess of brake fluid everywhere.
front rotors are done. Yeah, look pretty good. What the keen eye of you will probably notice is that I did reuse the brake pad wear sensor. It hadn't gone off and I'm cheap. So this side was easy. Went on like a dream. The other side took me forever. You probably can't tell it with the time lapse. You might have noticed it took me literally forever because I couldn't... With new disc, new pads, I couldn't quite get the piston on that side all the way back enough to like just easily put the caliper over. Sweet. Onto the rears. I now remember why I don't like doing brakes. Also, I have a lollipop. It's sour apple. It's good. We might just get away with compressing that one and not draining this. Fingers crossed it goes, I can't be bothered draining it now, but I will have to drain it for the other one. Also check out these sick mats Dad just rocked up with for me to use. They're meant to be gym mats, but it makes it so much easier to not lose all the little bits and pieces in grass and gravel. And also got another one. That's some motivation to keep going. It's pretty good. A lot nicer to work with. I don't know if you saw there that um the pads on the handbrake shoes were actually pretty sweet and I just adjusted it out there to try and get it so it's just catching on this because they look like they've hardly been used and then we should have a, a BMW functioning handbrake but as you know they suck and they're never going to do skids so it'll be that. Rainbow, yeah, big break, fancy. Damn. Whoop. You know when you don't have the right tool and you somehow surprise yourself with your genius solution? I had some clear pipe that I used to bleed, bleed brakes once. An empty spray bottle that fits perfectly over that. And now if I squeeze this, it's sucking from the end of that pipe. And I can shoot it back into here. Here it is. Here's the handle. Let's see if it sucks it up. Oh, look at it go. Look at it come out. Put that in there, and, oh yeah.
Look at it, now it's brake fluid coming out. Yeah, you can see it going down there. Okay. I think we're above, below the max line enough. We can call it there. Oh, self-cleaning. Look at that. Sucking it all the way out till we hit air. And there's one on the tube. I'm stoked with this little thing. Okay, I'm gonna start the timer and see how long this takes me. Just curious, I'm not really trying to race. Um, but hopefully you can see there, if it focuses, it's like 5.33 or something. So we'll hit start and see wheel off how long it takes. Okay, that's all done. The camera died, which is great, but 22 minutes from wheel off. So it's pretty good if you wanna do it yourself. Mind you, the most time takes is checking the car up. The back wheels are on, just need to be talked up. Um, so I'm going to talk them up, drop it down, and then we'll call it there for tonight and we'll pick it up in the morning. Brakes done. Good morning, it's threatening to rain here, so let's jump into it. Gonna give this thing a quick wash, give you some 318 cold start sounds, and then we'll take it for a spin and see see how it goes. Yeah, the brakes work down the driveway, which is pretty steep. Power? Just being light on them. Things on the surfaces are nice and mated, but they feel good. The pedal feels way better. I'm going to turn and see if you guys can see the road. The brakes feel so good. Ah, okay, the um, the miss is still there, it's almost stronger with the new coils, like when it kicks back and the, the bounce back of the refire is is more aggressive. Um, what's weird with it is it seems to be different on every startup, um, slightly different the problem, so I think the missing is probably EC, maybe even ECU related, because I think these had bad ECUs. Thanks for watching, we'll leave this one here and we'll kick off into the seats and some interior bits in the next one. And then as soon as the weather is good, Sasha have somewhere to do it, we'll probably rip that valve cover off and see what's going on with the Valvetronic. Um, just to see if there's any obvious issues on those gears and if there's any like slack in the teeth slash bird on the swirl motor gears on the... The worm gears, that's what I was looking for, worm gears on the, on the motor. So we'll see how that looks. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you did. And I'll see you in the next one. See. Cheers.